Hello viewers, I am Shaban and you're watching Tales of Life in Dubai and UAE. Today I have a special guest, an athlete who has lived and worked in UAE for more than five years. He's going to tell us his tale about life in Dubai and UAE. Thank you so much Michael. Thank you very much. Please say hi to our viewers. Hello viewers, I'm happy to be here to share my story about more than five years in Dubai. Thank you so much. So viewers, if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel so that you can get notifications each, each time a new video is uploaded. Um, I want to start by asking you some questions about your life in Dubai so that viewers who are new to Dubai or planning to come to Dubai can have some information to make this, uh, better decisions if they are coming to Dubai or if they are in Dubai. Yes. Uh, outside for the question, how long have you worked in Dubai? Uh, now five years. Mm -hmm. Yes, five years. And you've worked in only one Emirate or different Emirates? Uh, only Dubai. Only Dubai. Only one Emirate. Dubai. Yeah. Only Dubai. Yes, yeah. So after five years, do you still feel like staying here or you want to move on to another country? Something like Or go back to Uganda? Mm, my plan is to still continue uh, working from here. Mm -hmm. And if I have an opportunity, maybe I can go to the UK, Canada, something like that. But uh, here is still comfortable. Yes. Um, my other question would be, how easy was it for you to get a job in the beginning? Oh, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah, I was in Uganda teaching, and then a friend of mine, is called Ismail, uh, told me you will come in uh, July, get some money, and come for uh, during July. Uh, the heat is too much here. Mm, yeah, yeah. So he organized everything. I came on this visa for one month. Mm -hmm. Then I started looking for a job. Uh, luckily, within the one month, I joined a running club. I found uh, one, one gentleman called NASA. By that time, he was a manager for Jumeirah. Uh, mm -hmm. Jumeirah is a big salary on the farm. He offered me a job. Okay. So I started working in uh, housekeeping department during that time. 2014, December. Yes. And that was your first job? That was my first job. Have you worked for other companies between this time and between then and now? Yeah, between then I've worked for two companies. Now, uh, my second company was a fitness and I worked for Ignite Fitness and Wellness mm -hmm. as a uh, sports trainer for almost a year and uh, four months. And then I joined Ultimate Athletics as a coach. Uh, now I'm going to make a year also. Okay, yes. that's, that's a long journey. Um, about your new career now, the fitness, how easy is it for someone to join the fitness field? Can I just start without any training? Is it easy like that? Uh, first, to join the fitness field, you need to have a passion. Second, you need to have a fitness background. You need to be, you need to be, uh, you need to be uh, like you have been practicing this kind of stuff from home. Because at home I used to be a runner, I started my scholarship from Uganda Christian University. When I came here, mm. I found that uh, when I end, I found the fitness is too much uh, exciting here. So I did it such about how can I join the fitness, and then I found out that the only way to work from here in the fitness industry is to study. You need to study, get qualification, so that you can do a uh, proper proper fitness. You can give proper fitness. Clients, clients, yes. And how expensive is the course? Uh, the course is really expensive, but once you, I told you, once you want something, you can go, uh, go extra mile. So the course was about uh, 20,000 uh, 20, uh, 20, dirham, dirhams, but I used to pay in installment uh, because my salary was not that much to support the whole bunch of money. So I started with gym instructor. From that, I went to a personal trainer, that's the diploma in fitness. I did this thing and conditioning and then um, I, I decided to specialize in uh, uh, coaching, athletics. So I had to do a couple of courses in athletics again here to become an athletics coach. That's more expensive than you know, some university courses in Uganda. Yes, yes, but, if you but want, the rewards are like... Yeah, the rewards are really good and um, you get the benefits very fast. Okay. Yes. Um, how is it possible? Is it possible to take this same kind of fitness business into Uganda and can it work? Uh, in Uganda, yeah, it, it can work. Recently, I visited Uganda and I saw a couple of gyms. They are coming up. 
the payment is not the same like uh, here, but you find other people are making a living. For example, mm -hmm. I have uh, someone who's working in the gym in, in uh, Forest Mall, and uh, he graduated from university. He is not doing his own uh, specialty from what he did from university, but because he had the fitness background, he's now doing like uh, a spinning instructor, personal trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's getting some money from that. But if you compare the fitness here and the Uganda, here is more better. Okay. Yes, but still, even if I go back to Uganda, I can still survive. You can survive with the same. Uh, yeah, from the same knowledge. Yes. Okay. Um, another question I would like to ask you is still about the same field. Yes. Um, how easy is it for someone to work independently without an attachment to a company? If you go freelance, is it something that can be done easily in the dark? Yeah, freelancer, you need experience, you need connection. Yeah, you can uh, decide to go freelancer for some time. Um, the market, you, you need, need uh, yeah, you need to first work in a company for some time and then make connection with the other fitness instructor, fitness trainer who are freelance. You can, uh, there is a certain season that you can make a lot of money in fitness. Uh, for example, when it's winter, winter season, people are doing workout during December, there are people are working out to go in good shape because they are going back to the, their parents, they need to look good, <laughs> yes. some people are preparing for marriage. So most of people go into fitness to look good. With the target. Uh, yes, with the target. So when, it, uh, apart from winter, other days, uh, the summer is really hard. So Ramadan if, is a yeah, Ramadan. If you are going freelancer during uh, summertime, you so need to have money saved in your account to survive. Because someone who is having your visa will give you, you ask for permission, uh, your accommodation, your uh, transport, your feeding will also Everything will, be uh, will be on you. So you need to pre get prepared. Don't just resign from your job because you are going for freelance. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. I've been there, but I stayed here for almost uh, six months. Luckily, like I got another job. And you came back? Yeah, I came back, yes. Um, take us through your typical day. When you wake up in the morning, what time do you start your day and how does it end? Like a typical day? Uh, usually my day, uh, I program, I program my day idea, like the day before, before I sleep. Uh, so I make a program that in the morning I'll first work out myself because I have to train myself. Uh, another, th so another thing, I have this client and I'll have this one after an hour, an hour, because here we train for hours. Mm. So even an hour, you can have a break, then you schedule another client. That's how the day can move until the evening. And yes. How do you get that energy to keep working? Because your yours is fitness. You need to be involved. You need to be engaging your, your your clients. That means if it's running, you have to run. If it's playing football, you have to play. How do you keep that energy from morning till evening? All right. As I told you that uh, the clients here, uh, they book the, the day before, and you know I have missed and so on. So in the morning, uh, from maybe eight eight thirty to nine thirty, and then you have another so on. So then you create a break for almost 45 minutes to one hour. You have to rest and then you prepare for another client. Otherwise, if you have a client back to back, you can either you can collapse down. <laughs> or tomorrow you not wake up, which is not good for other sure. clients. Mm -hmm. It's better to schedule them and they are all catered within the within some breaks for your life. Yes, yes, yes. To, to re-energize. Yes. And um, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you waking up every morning and go to meet these clients and make them happy? Another day you wake up. What keeps you moving? What's your motivation? Uh, motivation is passion. A passion that I took extra mile to study this course, whether whether it was expensive or not, that's what I wanted. Mm. Uh, for me, I love sports so much. So, uh, the clients that we face, they are really they, some clients are really good. They they like the rewards are good. They give you good feedback, and then the achievements, mm. achievements that you see that you have been achieving in a short time period. Uh, they keep us moving. Some clients are so so good they come even they become even brothers to us mm -hmm. and others brother, a sister to us. So the field itself, the industry is good. And, and uh, the field itself. Yeah, yeah. You have uh, the motivation keeps you going. Okay. Uh, Michael, another question I want to ask you. It's just your own view. What do you have to say about? The stories that are moving around that people are suffering in UAE or in Arab countries. Any take? What's your take on that? Uh, my take on that is uh, like that uh, some uh, some people come here. Uh, 
in some companies that are not right mm. and uh, also it's most of most of the time is not from uh, United Arab Emirates it's from other Gulf countries for example Saudi Arabia we have to go Oman uh, Qatar sometimes Jordan but also those people if you are taken from your home to go and work uh, and you know that you have come to work you don't need to give more pressure to the company sometimes people go to the companies and to try to, they learn that some people are getting a lot of money from them are better than them they start challenging and they the start challenging so they start challenging the company and one side of the implement or if you hear about your fellow uh, uh, you say they call themselves Kadama. Oh, yeah. Kadama. So if you are another Kadama in another house is getting a lot of money, you push your boss. That's when the, uh, the cohesion come in, and then the bosses try to, to become so hard on you. So you can, you can, if you hear about some an opportunity, work for your boss until your contract is done, and then you plan to resign and go for another opportunity, something mm. like that. So you can grow from zero. I mean, some bosses, if they see that you are working very well and they they know about that you are you are educated some of them they have their own companies they, they can, can take you into they can take you into position. another position you have been working the house maybe you become a driver you have been having a house maybe you go and do something in their company but if you become so much tough on them they also become tough because mm -hmm. they the reason why yeah, you came yeah. from home you came to be a specific job you can change a you cannot change immediately because you have a, a certain contract you sign which is having a certain period of time yes and also in, in that do you think there's something also to to blame on companies that do not bring in people in proper means? There are some agents who bring in people to Dubai and UAE in illegal ways that that could cause also such things. Maybe yes, uh, there are some companies that also smuggle uh, members to come and work in the Arab Emirates uh, in the basis of that because people at home they are really suffering. So that when they hear that they are going to go in a plane. They get excited. They don't look into the contract when they sign it. Others they check don't. The company. Uh, others they don't get check company name as long as they have bought the plane. That's what's the first opportunity that people crying for. So before you bought the plane, before you, you get a air ticket, ask where are you going, what are you going to do. Most of the time, also those those people they will tell you you are coming for driving. Then you come here and start to do cleaning. Okay, then you are lucky if you have accommodation. You can get feeding, even if you get smaller salary, you come for driving and start cleaning. That's another job you can start from there. Because the agent will give the money at home, will not give back the money to you. Mm. They have already spent that money, they have or maybe shared it, they have disappeared. So start with the opportunity and then you grow. Another thing, uh, when uh, when you reach here and you have you are given another job, right? You can ask your company at home. This is what you told me I'm going to do. Mm. Or now I'm doing different something different. Some companies are finding money uh, to the to the to the what to the to the, to the colleagues, but some others they cannot do that. So you can utilize this opportunity, this opportunity and you keep on going. Yeah, but, but the good thing to, is to know which company is taking you and where are you going and what are you what going, to going to do. Yes, it has to be written down and properly. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um. <coughs> I wanted to know how you spend your free time because I spend my free time by doing sports, running, but for you it's your daily job, your running, physical fitness. So what do you do in your free time? Uh, in my free time I really enjoy watching movies. I can either go to Mall of Emirates or Ubini Batuta Mall. I enjoy to go there and watch especially the new movies. Mm -hmm. Or I sit back in my room and I enjoy some movies from Netflix because uh, my body is always moving around, so I need to sleep and rest my body while watching something interesting. So that's how I spend my time. Oh, I can go to church. Now, if I have a free time, I go to church. In Tikom, there is a church that we gather. Sometimes I go to church and, uh, yeah. It was my other question. Being a Muslim country, is it that easy to find a church to pray in? Yeah, absolutely right. Because someone out there may not know that there are churches here, every religion is allowed to praise as they wish yeah in dubai every religion is allowed to do whatever they want uh, according uh, as long as they are within the what the, the, the uae UK. law yes so uh there is a ch that church i told you is on friday so on friday i also work in the morning but there is also some services from tw uh, 12 to 1. 
so one hour to the service. So if you have time, I go there, and they also have other services. In the evening, if I have time in the evening, I go there. So there is a Catholic church, there is born again, there is Anglican mm -hmm. church, there is every. Most of the regions are here, so there is no way you can say that I will, I will not go. <laughs> There's no chance for you to pray. Is, yeah. um, if we go back to work-related question, yes. have you ever encountered a very complicated or very difficult clients? And how do you manage such situations if you have ever had them? Yeah, most of the clients are not easy because they are paying really, really expensive. Mm. And, uh, our even our companies that they, they, they go through a lot of bills, they train us how to handle the plants. The course that we started, they they, 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 they prepare us uh, to be ready. Mm. So some clients they really want to be pushed, like you push them, they don't want to, to, to relax even a single minute. Not to use all their time. Yeah, all they their time. For the, uh, one hour from one exercise to another, they have to be five days. But if they don't want water break, from one exercise to another one, from one exercise to another, until they finish the whole thing. Mm. But others, they can, they, they tell you, I need this kind of time to rest. And also, if you see that others are also lazy, you push them so that you get the results. Mm. So most of the client, everyone has his own character. Depends because you is having uh, having different people. Some people have different world views. Some people have, have some people come for exercise with other intentions. So you first get what their area of interest. So that you give them what they want. Yeah, specifically what they, what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, in this fitness, a lot of people use drugs, enhance, like energy drugs, enhancement drugs. Does it work for you or do you use any of those kind of drugs to keep up with the press? No, uh, with the drugs, uh, because uh, the, the drugs that you have, you only find them in the hospital. <laughs> So it's not easy to purchase. It's not, it's not easy to I know some people use uh, like performance supplements, mm. uh, which are which are, uh, are prescribed in the, the pharmacies. pharmacies. But me myself have never tried. Uh, I usually use nutrition because I also have skills in nutrition. If you're a fitness instructor or personal trainer, you know nutrition very well. Mm. There's that part of the course that is really hard, but you have to pass it if you have become a trainer. You need to know how to plan food for clients. You have to not tell them what to do, especially when they are losing the weight or they want to gain weight. You have to know which kind of food they eat. Don't tell the clients to go for <laughs> for, for drugs. <laughs> for drugs, yes. Okay. yes. But you don't use any supplements. No, no, no body building supplements at all. Mm, I see some people use them, but me myself, I know. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a know. big trend in UAE. Most most of the pharmacies have a big section for only supplements. And it's like on market always you have promotions, buy one get one free. Mm. It seems to so many people who are going to gym and who are working. Out. Yeah, I, what I can advise people is that when you want to use a supplement, you will first go and see the doctor. Especially the doctor, you go for, because the, the, the supplement works for certain blood type mm. and maybe for certain muscle type, right? So if you go and check up and then the doctor will tell you you need to use this kind of supplement to gain weight or to gain muscle. If your doctor recommends that supplement, then, you then you're good to go and use it. But there are some people who use supplement, you gain, okay, you gain weight very well, you put on muscle. But after some time you have, you have a breathing uh, problem with the breathing, you have a problem with the digestion system, which means the, the drug you're using to put on muscle is ejecting the, the, the what? It's injected in the system. So that's when you start getting complications, you become very uh, tiny, and yet you wanted muscle. Mm. So, so work yeah, fitness is all about feeling good. If, for example, a parent who can carry the, the, the children around and if they play around the park, that is a benefit of yeah. Yes, that's the benefit of uh, fitness. Someone who can run 10K and finish without uh, like getting cramps or muscle, muscle pull, yes, that's fitness. So it's, fitness should be easy and just a lifestyle. Uh, if someone is in Dubai new or not new but someone is in Dubai and wants to get your services, your fitness training, are you free to give anyone training or do you charge? Uh, they have to come to your company. Uh, they come to the company or they can contact me but mostly they have to go through the company because I'm under someone's license. So the license, under my license there is insurance that is paid to the client and in case there is an accident. So when the comp uh, client comes through the, the, comp uh, the company and then the company is forwarding uh, the client to me, so we negotiate 
after the company has, has handed the client to me, the rest is our problem okay. to solve here. Yeah. So what I'll do, I'll put a, a link in the description for your company in case anyone wants to get services yeah. for fitness training, you'll find that link under the description of the video. Yes. Um, what message do you have for someone who just came into you to Dubai or UAE, looking for a job, frustrated? What message do you have for them to get some motivation to keep searching, to keep moving on? Uh, first, first of all, uh, the message I can give to that person is uh, never give up. Like when you come here, everyone has his own luck. Some people come within it two days, they apply online, they are called for the interview and they get jobs. Some people struggle even for one year, they apply, they go for interview, they don't get jobs. But if you come here and you know where I come from, that keep searching, keep, keep searching, keep, keep, keep going for interview and never give up because your luck is not someone's luck. Some, some people can be really, really lucky to come here within one month and they have the job. Other, yeah, they have to start lucky, but yes, you have to keep searching. But you have to keep searching and praying and uh, trust God that you can get a job. Yes, yes. Um, I think basically that's all we have I can ask from you. And if anyone has any other question, they can put it down in the description or in the comments. Maybe another guest will come and explain to us any other things that we have not covered in this interview. Or I can still get back to Michael if he can give me some more time and we can clear out some more questions that you have. Thank you so much for watching. Please keep subscribing, keep sharing the video so that anyone else who needs this information can access it. Thank you so much our viewers. Thank you so much Michael. Thank you so much Mr. Shabana.